Every day in hospitals all across the U.S., medical miracles literally rescue patients from the brink of death. But in these same hospitals, millions of patients contract infections. Astoundingly, medical professionals break the number one rule of hygiene. Research shows that over half the time, doctors fail to clean their hands before treating the patient. Other professionals pull on gloves without cleaning their hands first. If you pull on the gloves without cleaning your hands first, you're simply contaminating the exterior of the gloves. So hand hygiene is the number one rule, the number one challenge, but equally important is the second challenge. That is, how to keep your hands from becoming contaminated, recontaminated, before they reach the patient. Stand in an emergency room and watch the most meticulous doctors and nurses clean their hands and glove, and then reach up and pull open the privacy curtain to see the next patient. Well, that curtain is seldom changed. It's laden with bacteria, and as a result, their hands become recontaminated just before they touch the patient. You should assume that every surface in a patient's room and in any other caregiving area is contaminated because the research shows that at least three quarters of these surfaces are laden with MRSA, BRE, C. diff, and other infection-causing pathogens. It's the high-touch areas that are often most contaminated. There is so much attention paid to washing the floors and the toilet seats but much less attention paid to keeping the bed rails clean, the over-the-bed tables, the call buttons, the television monitors, the other surfaces immediately surrounding the patient. In one study of 20 hospitals up and down the eastern seaboard from Washington, D.C. to Boston, over half the items in a patient's room that were supposed to be cleaned when one patient is discharged and before the next is admitted to that room were left untouched by the cleaners. It's the high touch surfaces that pose the biggest risk to patients because caregivers come into the room, they may clean their hands at the entrance to the room, but then they put their hands on the bed rail, they pull open a drawer, they touch the infusion pump or the IV pole, and then they carry that bacteria that's lingering there right to their patient. Numerous studies show the danger to patients from bacteria left behind lingering on surfaces such as over the bed tables, IV poles, and bed rails. In one study of a nine bed ICU, over half the patients who picked up MRSA, that is became colonized with it, picked up a strain that was not present on another patient in the ICU at that time. We learned three things from this study. First, the importance of avoiding touching those surfaces before touching the patient. Secondly, the danger posed by inadequate cleaning. And thirdly, the advantage of knowing which patients are carrying MRSA. You cannot control the spread of this bug if you don't know the source. Tufts University researchers found that the number one strongest predictor of which patients picked up the superbug, VRE, is whether a patient with VRE had occupied the room in the preceding two weeks. That's through almost three terminal cleanings. So it's obvious that putting your patient in a room that's inadequately cleaned when the preceding patient was carrying VRE puts your patient at serious risk. A 2006 study at Rush University in Chicago found that when researchers worked with the environmental services staff to show them the importance of drenching and waiting rather than the quick spray and wipe, especially when cleaning with detergents, and also the importance of cleaning frequently overlooked objects, such as the high touch items, the TV monitor, the call button, the bed rail, the over the bed table, that this combination of extra training resulted in a two thirds reduction in colonization by VRE. Of course, most medical professionals have little to say about how their hospitals are cleaned. 
And that's why it's so important to ensure that all medical professionals are trained to avoid recontaminating their hands by touching frequently contaminated surfaces around the patient. Doctor and patient shaking hands is warm and reassuring, and adjusting the bed may be necessary, but if so, the physician needs to clean hands again before touching the patient. Also, of course, it's important to clean the stethoscope to prevent bacteria from being carried patient to patient. Another area of the patient's room that is seldom clean and therefore becomes a vector for bacteria is the infusion pump. After adjusting the controls on this item, you should definitely clean your hands before touching the patient. Lab coats can be heavily contaminated with drug-resistant bacteria. Research shows that if a physician leans over the bed of a patient who unknowingly is carrying or colonized with MRSA, 65% of the time, the lab coat will pick up that germ. Then the doctor will carry the bacteria to the next patient's bed where it can be deposited. The doctor touches his coat or reaches into his pocket and contaminates his hands because the germ is on that coat. In hospitals that don't screen all patients for MRSA colonization, this is especially a problem. But it's true for C. diff and other pathogens that can live on fabrics for weeks. They are all picked up on lab coats and uniforms. To make matters worse, these lab coats don't get laundered as often as they should. A University of Maryland study showed that 65% of medical professionals admitted that they change their lab coat less than once a week, even though they know it's contaminated. 15% admit they changed it less than once a month. A vivid example of the impact of contaminated equipment occurred in a burn unit in Galveston, Texas. When a VRE outbreak began in the burn unit, hospital personnel cultured every surface in the unit. The results were revealing. 19% of bed rails, 26% of infusion pumps, and virtually all other surfaces were contaminated with VRE. That's just one superbug. Imagine if they had cultured for all pathogens. By swinging into action with a more aggressive cleaning regimen and screening incoming patients for VRE, they were able to eradicate VRE from the unit. But then they experienced a setback. In November, a physician treating a patient with a large shoulder and neck burn noticed one item had not been cultured, the EKG wire just used on that patient. Four days later, his patient's wound tested positive for VRE and molecular typing confirmed the germ had come from the wire. Amazing. Here's the punchline. A patient discharged 38 days earlier had left behind the VRE on that wire. One of the fastest growing hospital infections is Clostridium difficile, or C. diff for short. It appears that alcohol-based hand sanitizers do not kill C. diff spores. So it's important if there's C. diff anywhere in your area of the hospital that you clean your hands with soap and water. Don't rely on those alcohol-based hand sanitizers. It's not that soap and water kill the C. diff spores, but they do help wash the spores off your hands and down the drain. So how do patients contract C. diff? Most patients coming into the hospital do not have those C. diff spores in their gastrointestinal tract unless they've been hospitalized frequently in the past. The fact is that most hospital patients contract C. diff inside the hospital when they swallow the C. diff spores themselves. How could such a thing happen in a hospital? Well, it happens because the surfaces in the hospital become heavily contaminated with these invisible spores if anyone in the hospital has C. diff. C. diff causes rampant diarrhea and the spores literally get on everything. Then patients reach out to the surfaces around their own bedside, whether it's the bedside table or the bed rail or the IV pole, even their bed sheets or a nurse's uniform or a blood pressure cuff. 
they pick up those spores on their hands, then they touch their lips, or when their meal tray comes, they pick up their roll or sandwich and they eat it without cleaning their hands first and they ingest those spores along with their food. Effective environmental cleaning is so important to protect patients from C. diff that when it isn't done properly, placing a patient in an inadequately cleaned room can be a deadly mistake. Research at Case Western University and the Cleveland VA show how important environmental cleaning is in protecting patients. They found that after terminal cleaning, the kind of cleaning that's done when one patient is discharged and before the next one is admitted to the room, 78% of surfaces were still contaminated with C. diff spores. But after the researchers worked with the cleaners and showed them the importance of drenching and waiting rather than the quick spray and wipe, and the importance of using bleach when C. diff is present in the hospital, they were able to reduce that contamination with C. diff down to 1% from 78%. That's very important in protecting your patient from C. diff. Of course, most medical professionals have very little to say about how the hospital is cleaned, but the step you can take that's so important is to make sure that your own hands are not a vector carrying those C. diff spores to the objects right around your patient's bedside. And of course, in addition, making sure that your patient cleans his or her hands before eating and avoids touching his lips after touching surfaces in the room. To help you remind your patients of this fact, we at the Committee to Reduce Infection Deaths have actually developed a little tent card that you can have put on every patient's meal tray. We'd be glad to make these available for your hospital. Many people think that it's antibiotics that cause C. diff. While it is true that patients on antibiotics are particularly vulnerable to C. diff-associated diarrhea, the real cause of C. diff is not the use or overuse of antibiotics. Patients will not develop C. diff-associated diarrhea unless they have those C. diff spores in their gastrointestinal system. And almost all the time, those spores enter their system because the patient has swallowed those C. diff spores. That's why it's so important that we help patients protect themselves from swallowing those spores. Hi, my name is Jeff Borer. I'm the chairman of the Department of Medicine at the State University of New York Downstate Medical Center. At SUNY Downstate, we're committed to reducing infection risk. Uh, that's why we've welcomed the Committee on uh, to Reduce Infection Deaths to film their DVD here. As a healthcare professional, we're all part of a large team. New research has shown that bacteria can live on surfaces such as IV pumps, patient tables, bed rails, for over 96 hours. If a patient has surgery, the surgeon can do a great job up in the OR and everything can go well. But if the bacteria gets into that wound after surgery, it could be deadly to a patient. That's why cleaning the environment is so essential. You should assume that in addition to the patient's skin, all the surfaces in the room are contaminated with organisms that patients bring in, or healthcare workers bring into the room, such as MRSA, VRE, or C. difficile. Now ironically, and we've shown in a large study of 36 hospitals, the areas that housekeeping focuses on to clean a room particularly what we call terminal cleaning when a patient leaves and another patient comes in, have been the floor, the toilet, and other traditional areas. But in reality, the most important surfaces, the ones that are truly contaminated with the VRE, the MRSA, and the other organisms that we worry about, are what we call high-touch surfaces. These are surfaces in the patient's immediate environment, like the overhead table the rail on the bed, the call button, or the blood pressure cuff. These are all contaminated with organisms that the patients and the healthcare workers bring into the room, and you need to assume that they are all contaminated. MRSA, VRE, and C. difficile will remain alive on surfaces, even those surfaces that look clean, for days to weeks, unless those surfaces are thoroughly cleaned and disinfected so that surface cleaning and hand hygiene are the ways we protect patients.